Hey guys, welcome back to Nightcap. It's hurricane season down here in Miami, so if you hear thunder and lightning, we tend to get washed away around this time. My first viewer feedback episode on my take on Chad Johnson was really, was embraced by you guys and a lot of people really, it resonated. So on this feedback episode, I wanna touch on the issue of Chicago and the violence that has seemed to just ravage the city where over the July 4th weekend there were what? News reports said there were 14 people killed, 82 people shot. And let's assume that's teen, let, let's, assume, let's assume that's inner city kids. Um, throughout the course of the show, I've touched on a topic on the glorification and marketing of a gangster lifestyle. In a way, the street life was something that was a means to an end, mm -hmm. right? Do you think subconsciously or indirectly now it's become a gimmick? Yeah, it's like the street's like a brand. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I see more people who, who want to be street than people who are street. Isn't that crazy though? Yeah, because I tell people all the time, I hear other rappers say like, oh man, I do it for the street, I'm staying in the street. I'm, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, and I just look at them like, Straight up, mm. like you said, when the goal is to get out the street. Yeah, I if got you it, really yeah. come, from, that's how. Yeah. that's how I kind of know, like, if you really about that or not. Like, the if you really cool. from that place, yeah. you know the obstacle is to get out of the place. And in my opinion, the exploitation of essentially inner city pain for the sake of profit. In a theoretical sense, it seems like is the whole world dancing to the rhythm of inner city pain. Um, when I think about the issue in Chicago, one or two things come to mind. I don't know, I, I see a generation of young kids who are just lost and, and, and blinded, and they're blinded by apathy. But a sicker disease is on hand in which, what happens when ignorance what happens when a lifestyle that's, that's, that's detrimental, that's fatal, is being rewarded monetarily? And when I say re rewarded monetarily, it seems like Chicago and its gangstified reality and it's, 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 it's we're about that life. Why are some of these young people being given record deals? In my opinion, many of these young people need to be given therapy. So as we look at the issue of Chicago and we paint these kids as, 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 as gangsters and terrorists to society, what does it say about larger society? What does it say when, you know, we're dancing to this music, we're bobbing our heads to this, it, 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 it's basically, empowering these kids to say, hey, this behavior is basically alleviating my reality out the hood because let's get one thing straight. In the absence of economic opportunities, people will do what they have to do to kill, to eat, to eat. It's more peaceful. Really? It's more peaceful having a million dollars in the bank and, and sleeping, you know what I'm saying, than yeah. having a million dollars in the house. Knowing that any day they gonna come, they can come get it. So, on a larger theoretical scope, I've taken the task, the concept of why is it the drug dealer turned the drug dealer gangster turned rapper? Why is that painted and exalted as the image of black success? Because let's be honest with each other: for every Jay Z and Fifty Cent. There's about a million brothers that are in jail that followed that course. So let's take it further, because the, the truth is, if we basically glamorize the inner city's pain, we have to ignore the reality and the inequality that has caused these kids to sell crack to their family members, that have caused these kids to treat each other like target practice. I think about the Trayvon 
incident and what really bothers me, where are the pundits? Where are the leaders? Why aren't we boycotting Chicago? Is it because, I don't know, it's, it's, it's inner city kids that's killing each other and there's no, there's no political gain by stepping out and, and preaching about this. There's no, I don't know, there, there, there's no star power involved. So, in having said that, I want to share, I want to read some feedback that I got on the issue. The first feedback is a, is a nightcap support on Twitter by the name of LD. And she says, we're dealing with a generational disease of low self-worth here. We're seeing the same thing, just in different layers. Here's a nightcap supporter by Neftva, Neftva Romain. And he says, it's time for the consumers to step up and say no to irresponsible business practices of labels. Stop exploiting destruction. It's a good point. Here's the problem. Is there a larger conspiracy of, are we pushing this culture and this glorification of violence on inner city kids because we want to keep this underclass there because it's essential for this underclass to be there. I don't know, for, for, for appeasement, you know, some on a larger conspiracy scale will say, well, it's feeding the prison system and prison system is big business. I won't, I won't go that far. I would, sometimes things don't need to be over, we overthink things theoretically sometimes in the harsh reality is, it's about money. In this country, money is the almighty. And right now, obviously, this music that's quote unquote, that, that, that people call detrimental or poison to kids' minds, it's basically selling. I like to say, we criticize Mike Tyson, we call him every name in the book, but in his heyday, why did we sell out arenas to go see Mike Tyson fight? What does that say about us? So let's not think about the kids in Chicago because the kids in Chicago are a byproduct of a larger societal issue. And sadly, they've become the fallout of a society that just doesn't care anymore. Just, I'm, not, I'm not gonna make this a race thing. I'm gonna make this an issue about economics. These kids, if they understand that beefing, fighting, promoting a I'm about that life, if it's gonna land me a lucrative record deal to get me and my family out of hell, what am I gonna tell that kid? He got so many brothers right now, about 13, 14, doing whatever to get studio time, yeah. right? Do you think, you have a song called Letter. Yeah. It's a very powerful song. Do you think sometimes that message is understood that this was a means to an end and I'm not saying, ha ha, this is how I'm getting money? I mean, like me, when I do my music, yeah. that's the reason like, I always talk about the consequences as well. Yeah. So when, within telling my story, I'm trying to give you a, a guideline. Like, you know, of course we were getting money, but this is what we were facing. This is what we're facing because, you know, it may sound crazy, but I understand that person. Yeah. Like that person with nothing else to do in the hood. Yeah. That, that's, and they think or feel, or maybe it is their only way, means of taking care of their family. I understand them. Yeah. When you put in a situation like yeah. I felt like I was, if you're 15, 16, yeah. and your brother go to prison, he was taking care of your family. Mm. You know, your mother don't have a job that's yeah. uh, paying enough. Mm to provide for you and your little sister, and your little sister younger than you, what you do? Now, what we can do is stop the endorsement of this. Because by saying, you know what, we've had enough. You know, I believe in free speech. I believe that every artist should have a right to, it, 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 the truth is, I was a, Tupac Shakur, Mob Deep and some of these guys were my favorite artists because when I listened to their music, it was less a glorification of a lifestyle, more so a 
storytelling of the lifestyle. The problem is, for a less, uh, for, for a younger mind, is that message understood as just a story. Sometimes for a younger mind, the message become, the messages become cloudy, especially in a city where when you're desperate, you want to survive, and you say, hey, this is my way out. If it means I have to let life imitate art so I can get that deal, so I can get out of here, that's what will happen. And I think that's what's happening in Chicago. I think that essentially these kids want out and they don't know how to get out. So I think us as a community, us as a people, I don't know, have to get out of our comfort zone and, and show these kids a way out. Instead of saying, I don't know, looking from afar as there go the zoo babies. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this. I've always thought of people who have all the right things to say, have the right doctrine for me, you, and everybody else, but will not address the problem. And in saying that, I'll paint a scenario. If you see a prostitute on a corner and you don't offer help to alleviate her situation, you, you're in no space to speak on anything she has done. Now, if you offer help and she refuses, then you can. But until you are willing to make a sacrifice to better a person's reality, you have no right to speak on that reality. Until next time, love and live. Thank you. Just real people, real convo.